y'all, it's Crafty Hope here, and welcome! I am participating today in the Hop Along Red Riding Hood Hop, sponsored by the Live Art Journaling and Self-Development Group on Facebook. So, if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, and if you are old, welcome back! <laughs> So today I am creating a little piece of art that is inspired by Red Riding Hood. This is in celebration of the Live Art Journaling and Self Development Group reaching 5,000 members. So when they had the theme come up of Red Riding Hood, um, it took me a minute to come up with something. But the moment I had this idea, I was like, I'm in. I'm so in. I've got to make this. And so you get to watch me make this um, little piece of art that um, is inspired by Red Riding Hood. So to start this, I decided to make sure that I had a bit of Red Riding Hood in here. And since I didn't have a copy of the story in any of my stash, I found a site online where I was able to print out the Grimm Brothers version of the story. I just did this on copy paper and I'm altering it here with some distress inks and distress oxides watered down, splashed on, rubbed through, just getting it grunged up and it really doesn't matter. None of that color is going to show through in the end point. I think I even, I, I don't show it on video, but I even use some um, walnut ink and some coffee, some instant coffee on it. So, um, y'all, the Grimm Brothers version of this story is really grim. Um, it was only like two and a half pages long and it ends with a little Red Riding Hood being eaten by the wolf. And that's it. It's over the end. Um, but I had to have the story kind of there in the background. I love to start anything with a bit of collage and I knew that that would immediately get me going. So... I crumpled up all those papers. I took off some of the margins and stuff that was the blank. I really just wanted the pieces with the writing on them. And so that's, I tore it down, got all that, ripped it up. And I'm using a bit of Mod Podge and an old brush. And I'm just going to paste these onto an 8 by 10 canvas board. I did prep this canvas board with some gesso, but that's not a big deal. That I ended up covering the whole thing up, so it that was an unnecessary step. So I didn't even show y'all me doing that. <laughs> so I'm getting that down, and you see I'm flattening it down with like a scraper thing. That does flatten it down some, but it doesn't get out all of those wrinkles. Um, and the wrinkles are kind of important in giving me a little bit of texture for some of what I'm going to do here. So my last step here on this part of it was I did cover the whole thing with a layer of the Mod Podge just as a sealer. Because all of those inks that I added on those pages are water reactive, I wanted to make sure that they didn't react with some of the steps I'm going to do here. Now I could have just folded those papers over the edge or... Um, you know, not gone over the edge, but I'm going to go ahead and trim down the excess off the edges and even sand it a little bit. I did find later some of the pages were coming up and I just glued them back down. No big deal. So I have sped this up quite a bit because um, this video y'all was so long and so many of these steps are repetitive and I just, you know, I didn't think anybody needed to watch me do these repetitive steps in slow-mo. <laughs> All right, so these are a couple of acrylic paints just from Target. Um, they're on the kind of blue-green side. The lighter one, I think, is called Robin's Egg, and that darker one is called Deep Sea. And I am making a sky. Now, you see I started with a little bit of an arc, kind of a rainbow shape in that lighter color, and then I'm coming in with that darker color and blending them together and then making the rest of my sky this darker color. I wanted that little pop of light where I'm going to have my Red Riding Hood so that, um, yeah, so that it's not so dark right there. But I do want her to be in some kind of spooky woods. That was my, what I saw with these large, looming, spooky trees with this tiny little girl in red. Um, so that's that's where I'm going with this. But um, I've used this kind of blue-green. I think it kind of worked out to have that bit of green in it because red and green are complementary colors. So I think 
that ends up being okay and it kind of adds to the eeriness of it that it's got kind of an off-putting shade to the sky. Now the next thing I'm going to do is come in and do my my ground and I'm just using a couple different shades of brown. I think I've got like burnt and raw umber and burnt sienna or whatever not just whatever brown I had and I'm using a real scruffy brush to put it down because I wanted some texture to it you see how where the sky and the land meet it's kind of scruffy I'm going to come back in a little bit more and scruff it up even oh, yeah there give it a bit of texture because the ground isn't always even and perfect and I I wanted that to be there so um I'm going to add a little bit of green here. I'll end up painting over the green later. It, it One of the steps I take here, I end up not liking what's going on down there. But this, as a start, was, you know, it gave me my grounding, my, my placement here. So I am using, to make some super spooky trees, that is some acrylic ink. I think it's Liquitex, and it's, I believe it's Burnt Umber. I'll have the name of it with a link to it in the description box below. But I've got that and a bamboo skewer, and that's what I'm making these trees with, y'all. I tried several different things for making this vision of these trees come to life. I tried a straw that I blew through to kind of make it be a little organic. I tried a little um, like puffer tool that's like a pump to do it, but really this skewer did exactly what I wanted it to do. So you can see I'm just drawing a line of the ink and at the top of that I am pulling out branches and I don't even care what I'm just having them go in all directions and not making them too low on the page because I want these to be looming and large and spooky and scary and um so yeah and then I am pulling out a little bit at the bottom I'm using kind of the side of the skewer to pull out some roots now those are going to change here in a little while because they become uh, too dominant on the page and I just don't think that they were what needed to be um, the focus of this so we'll take those away in a little bit so as you see I am doing this I kept a lot of this in here because it was it's my favorite part of this page are these super spooky trees now I love a good fairy tale and that's part of the reason I jumped on board with this challenge I um I might even do a whole series of uh, fairy tale type stories here because this one inspired me so much. I've already put this picture in a frame and hung it in my house that, um, yeah, my husband loves this picture. I love this picture. It was, yeah, perfect. All right, you see there I'm dipping into with my skewer right into my ink and putting in a, a few smaller ones. I didn't want the, um, I wanted to have some dimension to this. So I wanted a couple smaller trees kind of in the background of it. And there's where everything kind of goes awry with the roots. I let that ink drip down and they just went a little icky. They were not, yeah, they were not for me. So we'll fix that in a little bit. I'm going to add one more tree here. And um, you'll see in the pictures at the end where that wrinkling of the paper really helped to give some texture to the um, the trunks of these trees. Gave them kind of a bark-like feeling and that helps, you know, you can see how the, the ink moved around some of those lumps and bumps that were in there. So here I'm going to come back in with those inks, I mean those inks, those paints again in just a couple shades of brown. And I'm using a... Um, a kitchen sponge is all it is just to go over that because I still wanted to maintain that organic texture but I didn't really want to pull out that paintbrush again so I'm just using a kitchen sponge and blending those colors to get a mix of colors and go over yeah where those tree bar those tree trunks what are those things those tree roots were just too dominant now I do want to keep some of the tree roots in there so I'm going to go back in with the ink and and pull them back out some so that's gonna take me um a hot minute to do not too long but I was trying to make sure they weren't too matchy matchy because it felt like they were all like these two pronged leg things and so I played with that for a little bit to get them to I don't know feel more like like actual trees and not so matchy and again this is not 
the um, main part of this, but I wanted to, I don't know, I, I didn't want it to be realistic, but at the same time, I didn't want it to feel too fake. All right, so I have zoomed in on this a little bit, so it's a little um, less defined, but I wanted you to see what I'm doing here. Super simple. I'm taking just some red acrylic paint. I think that's some Martha Stewart and a really bright red, and I've got a fairly small paintbrush. I'm trying to make sure all my ink down there is dry before I do this. And y'all, all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle and then a triangle. And the base of that triangle is going to be a little wavy. And that is my little red riding hood. <laughs> um, I'm going to add a few details to her as we go along here. Um, you see there's a couple more minutes here in this video. And it's going to be of me trying to get her to stand out a bit more on this page. So I'm going to go over her once or twice with this acrylic paint. And then I've decided that because the ink is so shiny on the trees, I'm going to use here some. This is Amsterdam acrylic ink. And I think it's like a primary red. I'll have to, um, I'll have to find what the name of that is. Um, but I'm just going to go over that so that it has a little bit of that shine that the, that the ink has on the trees. And then I will dry that. And I'm going to come back in. I decide that she needs to stand out a little bit more and that some shadows and highlights would make that. Now that I do have it zoomed in, um, y'all didn't really get to see what that was. That is just a Faber-Castell pit pen in black. I believe it's the one with the brush. And I did an outline of my Red Riding Hood kind of on the inside, not so much on the outside of her to give some like I guess they're like called low lights and then I'm using another fine tip brush to use some titanium white paint and add some highlights on the inside I'm kind of making lines where I would think there would be folds to her to her cape and her hood and um, I didn't like some of the ones on the bottom so I'm just going back over it with some more of that ink y'all you don't like something just paint over it do it again. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I painting over that and then going in. I should, probably should have just used a white pen to do this, but I didn't think of that till later and it's fine. I love her. All right. I'm going to show y'all some pictures of her here. I hope you like this. If you do give me a thumbs up, make sure to hop to the next participant in this hop. I'll have the link below. And if you're not a member of the Facebook group, please go over there and join. And um, they might have another opportunity for you to join in one of these hops too. All right, guys. Thanks for hopping by. Thanks for watching and keep on crafting on. Bye.